Example 126. In 1980, the average time to complete a four-year degree was 4.9 years. In 2006, a study of 31 randomly selected students had an average completion time for their four-year degree of 5.3 years with a population standard deviation of one year. Use the p-value method to test the claim that the mean time to complete a four-year degree is now more than 4.9 years. All right, so it's a use a p-value method problem, right? So they're asking us to use the p-value method to test the claim that the mean. So it's a hypothesis test about the mean, and they want us to use the p-value method to do that. So let's write the claim down and start with that. All right, so the claim is that the mean time is now more than 4.9 years. The mean is more than or greater than 4.9 years. All right, so that's our claim. Our next step of the problem is going to be to get HO and HA. Now, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are obtained from the claim, right? So we look at the claim and we ask what symbol we're dealing with. Since it's a greater than symbol, it's going to mean that HA and the claim will be the same because a greater than symbol is something that HA uses. All right, and then the null hypothesis is going to be the opposite or the complement, so it'll be less than or equal to 4.9. Okay, so we now have the claim, the HO, and the HA. Now let's collect the data for the problem. Now in the problem itself, they tell us that there are 31 subjects. So N is 31. They looked at 31 students, right? They had an average completion time for their degree of 5.3 years with a standard deviation of, it says for the population, of one year. And then they say use the p-value method to test the claim, and they don't go on to give us any kind of significance level. It's not given. When it's not given, we're going to assume a default case of 0 0.05. So that's the choice we make when it's not provided. Okay, so we have our data. Let's take the data and plug it into the test stat formula now. The test stat formula is z because we have a large sample size, right? something over 30, is equal to x bar minus mu sub 0, fraction bar, sigma divided by the square root of 31. Oops, I should have wrote square root of n, but I went ahead and put the n in there. That's OK. So the sample mean here is 5.3. The value from the null hypothesis is 4.9. We're going to divide by the standard deviation, which is 1, and then divide by the square root of 31, right? Okay, so let's enter all that in the calculator and see what it gives us. So we'll have parentheses 5.3 minus 4.9, close it up, divide by, open parentheses, 1 divided by the square root of 31, and close that up. And when we're done, we get the answer 2.23, so approximately 2.23, that's your z-score. All right, now once you have that z-score, the next step of the process is to take that and plot it on the curve to see where it is with respect to zero. So I'll draw the bell curve, and we're going to place that, test that on the curve. Remember, the center is at zero, and so 2.23 is then to the right of it. Now we have to go to the HA and identify what kind of test we're looking at here. This says greater than, it's like an arrow pointing to the right, so it's a right-tailed test. And if it's a right-tailed test, the rule to find the p-value is to find the area to the right of the test statistic, right? So for a right-tailed test, you find the area to the right of the test statistic. So this tail area is our p-value. Let's go look up 2.23 on our z-chart and see what area we find. Okay, so we're looking up 2.23, so we want to move down to the 2.2 row first. And now we want to go over to the fourth position, which is the 2.23 spot. So that's 2.20123. And we find the answer 0 0.4871. 0 0.4871. Okay, so we found the answer 0 0.4871. And remember, that's the area from the line to the center. We need to find the leftover amount, which is what goes in here. So we would literally do 0 0.5 minus that value. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4871. And of course, it's going to give you 0 0.0129. So in this case, we have 1.29% in the tail, and that's equal to our p-value. All right, now. 
we compare that p-value against alpha, so let's do that. So remember the p-value is equal to 0 0.0129. And how does that compare to alpha? Well, it is less than the alpha, which is 0 0.05. And so at this point, we can conclude that the p-value is small compared to alpha, so we will reject the null hypothesis. Reject HO and support HA. All right, once we have this, our final step is to identify whether the claim is HO or HA. So looking at the notation, the claim is HA, so we will say this phrasing for the problem. The sample data support the claim. The sample data support the claim. All right, and so that's our conclusion.